Hey everyone, Sam Kimmel here at Kimmel Fabrication Studio in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And today I'm gonna break down the process of vacuum infusion so you guys can follow along as we make this awesome carbon fiber shaker scoop. And I'll show you kind of step by step the products we use and the way that we do it. So don't forget to subscribe. Uh, that way you can watch more videos like this one as well as the new build series for all the different vehicles and projects that come and go from our shop. So I'm gonna start off with cleaning the mold and I've got some really fine sandpaper. This is 1200 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna kinda of go around it. It's been a while since I cleaned this mold and it needed a good cleaning. So I've sanded it now and wiped it down and now we're going into our mold sealer and then our release agent. On this particular mold, I'm using this Loctite FMS sealer and uh, you pretty much just wipe it on and then wipe it back off while it's still damp and it leaves a sealed coat so nothing can soak into the mold, especially when you're using resin directly on the mold. And then this is a free coat 700 NC, which is a release agent, and it just goes right over the top of that mold sealer. Now this next step, I'm actually gonna add wax right over that mold release agent. And the reason for that is because I'm gonna use PVA, uh, which is a polyvinyl alcohol. And if I were to spray the PVA directly over that release agent, it'll bead up almost like when you have water on wax. So I don't want that to happen. I want the PVA to stick nice and flat and not have any issues with lifting or separating. So I went ahead and waxed the mold just to put one layer on there so that we don't have any separation or lifting issues. PVA can be applied with a brush or you can wipe it on. In this instance, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it in with this little spray gun that I have, and it makes a nice even surface coat. And I put it on fairly thick, and that just ensures that I'll have separation of the part from the mold. I use a heat gun to just gently warm the surface and dry the PVA between coats. I applied tape around the perimeter of the mold because that is where we will be sticking the vacuum bag later, and I didn't want PVA on that portion. Once again, there's a lot of different ways that you can apply the gel coat. This time I'm going to use a pressurized cup gun, which is the 3M uh, version of PPS cup. The pressurized PPS system is actually used to spray undercoating and rock guard and bed liner and things like that, but it works well for spraying gel coat as well. I prefer using this system when I'm doing a small mold rather than loading up a big pressurized cup gun to spray gel coat. Gel coat is very thick, so you need a pressurized gun or a pressurized cup in order to force the material out of the spray gun. Now you can see I'm mixing up the gel coat and I measured the ingredients. I mix it really well and then I add that into the PPS cup, as you can see here, and I fill it up pretty much to the top and get the lid snapped on and everything tightened down. As you probably noticed, the PPS cup uses a disposable liner with that snap-in disposable lid. And I always pick it up just to make sure that it's snapped in all the way so that when I flip this upside down, it doesn't leak all over. I turn the spray gun upside down, attach it to the cup, and then we just connect this little pressure line that comes out of the gun up to the bladder section of the cup. Now, the cup, as you can tell, has this little fitting on the top. And when air goes inside of there, it actually forces air around the outside of the bladder um, which is that cup liner, and then pushes uh, with air pressure all that gel coat through the gun tip. Now I spray in three even coats, and I let those flash and just get tacky uh, before installing the first layer of carbon fiber. The first layer in your mold is going to be the outside layer of your part. So putting this very first piece in completely perfect and accurate is the only way to ensure that the outside of the part is gonna look nice. So I have a friend help me lay in that very first sheet, and we can get this thing put in there so that the fabric and all of the material is lined up and, and looks good and doesn't have any wrinkles or tears or anything like that. It definitely helps to have a friend help you with this first piece if you're working with a piece of carbon fiber that's fairly large. Because the gel coat is slightly tacky, it almost works as a spray adhesive to get that first layer stuck to the mold. But working with the second layer, you need to use a little bit of spray adhesive or something to hold it in there. And we use AirTac 2, which is a spray adhesive specifically designed for the composites industry. And I use it very sparingly. As you can see, I just barely missed a little bit on there. I don't like to put too much of the spray adhesive between layers uh, because I feel like it could compromise the part. Now this part is just a you know hood scoop for a car. It's not an aircraft part or anything like that. But if I was going to be doing um, you know, something for an airplane or something like that, there's definitely different processes to use. But for what we're doing, this works perfect. 
I want different parts of this mold to have different structural integrity points. And so you can see I'm adding a couple extra layers here and there. And those are specifically to reinforce that section of the hood scoop. Any big flat areas, I like to add a little bit extra material. And then I will go ahead and add full sheets on over the top of that. And that helps sandwich in those reinforced sections and make one cohesive part. So now we're gonna add in what's called a peel ply layer. And this makes it so the vacuum bag doesn't stick to the part. So this peel ply just goes in over the top of the carbon fiber. I spray tack it in there just to make sure that it stays in place while we suck the vacuum bag down. And once the vacuum bagging process is done, this will just get peeled off of the part and thrown away. The next thing that we're gonna add is called infusion mesh. And this mesh is exactly what it sounds like. It's a, it's a plastic mesh and it goes in on top of the peel ply and it helps the resin have a passageway to flow. If we were just to put a vacuum bag over the top of this without the mesh, the material would not be able to have enough flow rate and the resin would probably harden up before it ever made it through the part completely. So this is a very important step. Now I remove the masking tape. And as you remember, since that masking tape was there, there's no gel coat underneath it, which gives us a surface in which we can stick down this gum tape. Now the gum tape is what holds the vacuum bag to the mold. So now we're going to install the spiral tube. So the spiral tube works as two things. On one side it's the vacuum and it's going to suck all the resin through and on the other side it's going to be the inlet for the resin to go in. I place that spiral tubing over the top of the infusion mesh which allows the air to be easily sucked out and the resin to be easily pushed in through the mesh. I install this plastic T fitting into the spiral tube and that's what we will connect our lines for vacuum and our lines for the resin infusion, one on each side. All right, so here I am just spreading it open, putting that fitting in, and then I'm gonna get these tubes taped down onto the top of that mesh. And it doesn't have to be perfectly taped down or anything. This is just to temporarily hold it so that it stays in place while we put the bag material over the top. The bagging material that I use does not stretch, so we need to add these little pleats, which we use the gum tape to make these pleats. And that gives us a little extra material so that the bag has some room to be able to be sucked down into the molds. You want to make sure that your bag is big enough so that it can be sucked all the way down into the mold in every little crevice. In order to prevent any kind of bridging, air pockets, or voids, you want to make sure the bag is big enough to be able to be vacuumed all the way down into every bit of the mold. I poke a small hole to put that fitting through, and then I use gum tape around the fitting and the bag to seal them together and prevent any kind of air leak at the fitting. Now I install the hoses. One hose goes to my vacuum generator and the other hose will be used for resin infusion. So for now I just have it clamped off. You can see it's the hose at the back side. So now I've turned the vacuum generator on and I am sucking all the air out of the part and checking for any kind of air leaks or anything like that, making sure that there's no bridging and it's time to mix up the resin. On this particular piece, I'm gonna be using a CCP infusion polyester resin. Yes, you can use epoxy or anything else. This is just the one that I happen to use this time. I mix all the resin up and then quickly degas the resin, which removes any little air bubbles that are hiding inside of it. And now I begin the infusion process by taking off that clamp and sticking the hose down in the resin. Now, I should have used a bigger container because you never really want to add resin to a second container because it can induce bubbles, but I didn't have a bigger one when I started this project and I thought I did. So here we are working with two containers and uh, watching all this resin go in. It's actually really kind of fun to watch, um, but I also stand here and keep an eye on it to make sure no air bubbles are forming. If you do see air bubbles forming, it means that there's a leak somewhere in the bag and you want to address that immediately. The good things about polyester resin is the cure time is very quick, much quicker than epoxy, and depending on the temperature in the room, this might cure as quick as an hour. Um, I let this one sit overnight, uh, that way I could make sure that it was fully cured. Now it's just time to remove all the disposable vacuum bagging materials, and I blow a little bit of air under this flange edge, which helps separate the piece from the mold. You'll notice on the piece when I pull it out that it has a little bit of polyvinyl alcohol which creates a film that looks like saran wrap and it actually looks like there's something wrong with the part but that just washes right off. Now we can cut that flange edge off, give this a quick sanding and clear coat and it's ready to go to the customer. If you enjoyed this video be sure to click subscribe, give us a like, a follow, and a share and we will see you guys on the next one.